Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker, and I congratulate you on your new position. Madam uh, Deputy Speaker, it's, uh, I've heard this new Health Minister, Ms Courtney, and the previous Health Minister trumpet the increasing costs, uh, the increasing spend that this government has made into the health budget um, as though it's an extraordinary amount that they have um, provided towards such an essential service. Actually, it's just a, a statement of fact that every single government from time uh, memoriam has increased the health budget year on year. That's because there's some certain fundamental things which uh, happen in the health system in particular, more than other uh, portfolio areas, which require an increase in actual um, numbers uh, from the budget every year. And those things are um, the medical equipment and the consumables, those prices go up. Staff budgets, uh, start the cost of staffing uh, with CPI goes up every year, Madam Deputy Speaker. The number of patients in Tasmania has been increasing every single year between 5 and 7 per cent. That is the tsunami of people who are turning up at the emergency department and um, needing treatment, urgent treatment, needing to have access to an inpatient bed, needing to be discharged um, after they're well enough to go home and be cared for in the community with community health services, uh, which themselves require an increase in the budget because they have staff, they have consumables and they have medical equipment. So, Madam Deputy Speaker, it's a nonsense for the government to claim and to pat themselves on the back as though they have done something good for the health budget in their term of government. A history lesson, Madam Deputy Speaker, for the government, since they seem to have forgotten that in 2014, when they came in, they slashed $220 million from the health budget. Such an outrage. Uh, it was a disgusting, cynical move on the part of a Liberal government to come in and cut $220 million out of the health budget, particularly after claiming uh, that the previous Labor Green government had, been, um, had created a broken health system. Well, they came into what they said was a broken health system and then crippled it much worse, made a much worse situation by taking $220 million out of the budget. Under intense public pressure, they put $100 million back in. But Madam Speaker, Deputy Speaker, we are from that time $110 million down already. And what have we seen? 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, front page newspaper stories of terrible stories of people uh, in the emergency departments of the Royal Hobart Hospital, Launceston General Hospital in particular, waiting for uh, 36, 48, 72 hours for treatment. Uh, older people lying on the floor, young people, uh, people in acute mental health distress, unable to receive um, treatment in the inpatient wards, and staff terribly distressed. Ambulance paramedics, uh, I heard a story from Friday night of um, the uh, Southern uh, Ambulance and Volunteer Paramedic uh, stuck in the hallway with their patient in the Royal Hobart Hospital Emergency Department, minding them for six hours. There were no ambulances available for people in the south of Tasmania during that period. None, Madam Deputy Speaker. Yet today we have a, a Treasurer who comes in here talking about uh, the need to get efficiencies from every portfolio in, in government, including from health, not only has he already stolen $110 million from the base funding five years ago, but he wants to go in again, Madam Deputy Speaker, and take another $35, $50 million. We don't know. We don't have the final figure. It is disgusting to imagine that Tasmanians should have to bear a, a further cut to a health system which is already in acknowledged crisis, which is why we had the Access Solutions meeting. Solutions don't come free, Madam Deputy Speaker. We cannot keep uh, to be trying to uh, improve a situation with one hand and taking away from it with the other, which is exactly what this Treasurer and this Health Minister are going to be doing. So Minister Courtney will sit here and preside over a hospital which desperately needs 
more money. The registrar's letter confirmed that to the health executive. They need more staff at the emergency department. They need more staff in the inpatient wards. They especially need some funding for preventive health, Madam Deputy Speaker, which uh, the Liberal government has talked about but never provided anything substantial. We will continue to have more people needing to access emergency department treatment when we don't put the money into chronic care uh, support services in the community, when we don't fund and uh, legislate to reduce uh, smoking rates, uh, when we don't support the, uh, the work of uh, Chronic Disease Alliance and other community organisations um, and uh, health uh, agencies who are working to try and prevent people getting to the emergency department in the first place. This, this is not fat to be cut from the health budget, Madam Deputy Speaker. Which nurse will, be, will end up doing the paperwork because uh, Minister Gutman has uh, taken away somebody who does the administration of the hospital? There is no space to cut from the health sector. Uh, we, we know that solutions are about changing culture, but that is not enough. The Access Solutions meeting made it quite clear that there are real costs to improving the health system, to bringing it back to a basic standard of functioning. So, Madam Deputy Speaker, it's not good enough for the Treasurer to talk about getting efficiencies in health. Um, it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a crazy idea, really, to propose, given that the climate where we're waiting to hear tomorrow from the Health Minister the report from the Access Solutions meeting. So the Minister will present the report from the meeting and the findings uh, that are due the at the end of July, time at expired. the same time as talking about how she'd be uh, cutting the her own department. Bradden,